So we've got something that came in the mail today. I don't know what this is gonna be all about, but you're gonna to have to follow along to find out. So as I've said in previous videos, um, there's a central boiler group on Facebook. Um, I've posted on there, you know, I've shared some of the videos and, and all that fun stuff. Well, a gentleman by the name of John reached out to me and, uh, you know, he sent me information on converting my central boiler 550 HD into the air system of a 560 HDX. So we're going to go ahead and install that today. I don't know what I'm getting into. I know my father-in-law, Doug's going to come down and help me because we got to grind some stuff off. But we're going to try it. So it should be interesting. If you want to convert your 550 HD to a 560 HDX air system, a couple things. One, you don't get an afterburner. That's just, it doesn't work. Talked to John about that already because I was kind of interested. Doesn't work. Not enough clearance. Yet, so skip that. Everything here is going to go inside the firebox. So it's going to change the, the air channels to these tubes, right? Where'd it go? Oh, right there. Them, right there. And it's also going to change the front. So this piece of metal right here is the front of the firebox closest to where uh, the stepper motors are that forces air into the firebox. So this is all the hardware that comes with the upgrade uh, of the air system for the 550 HD. Do you know what doesn't come with this? You guessed it, directions. There are zero, zilch, nada, nothing written down on paper for directions. So thankfully, I had John's number, called him, said, hey, John, what in the world am I supposed to do with this? And he kind of walked me through a little bit of, uh, of that stuff. And he also sent me some pictures right here. And now I'm going to go wing it. There's one thing that I don't feel that awesome about doing, and that is uh, taking off the, they're like L brackets uh, for the air channels on the side. I have to grind them out of the firebox. So step one, make sure you don't have a huge fire in your firebox when you want to do this upgrade. You're pretty much going to have to shut the furnace down because it's going to be hot, smoky, and miserable. Step two, have somebody that has done this before to, to kind of help you walk through this. Step three, get dressed because it's going to be smoky and miserable. So make sure you put on your barn clothes or firebox clothes, whatever works best for you. I feel like Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day, neighbor. Could you be mine? Won't you be mine? Where did my socks go? All right. Who's playing the joke? Muck boots. A farm's best friend. All right, let's do it. All right, so step four for us today is gonna be to clean this firebox out, get the coals and put them down here. Uh, Cause we're gonna be laying inside here and you don't want it to get too hot. Gotta go get a headlamp. 
Now I'm going to clean off what, where the carriage bolts are at here on the side so I can get them off as soon as I get some, uh, so I can get to the air channels. Got a deep well. Can you see him? Yeah, you don't have them cleaned off. It looks like uh, three half or nine sixteenths. We'll have to go up and get the other set. Okay, sorry. Need to take a look and see if I can even grind them out. Okay. There's no sense taking both of them out if I can't grind them. All right. So the front 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 plate is out. Air hole side out. Do you want to see this, Doug? Yes, because this is going down the side. This, the side that you're on right now would be this one. What's this gonna hook on to? This piece here. So this, that whole tab comes out. Yeah, this will end up sitting like this. What I'm trying to say is that tab is straight up and down. There's a bolt goes through it. Yes. Okay, and then it and it turns and then it goes back in. Yes. That whole thing gotta come out. He told me that the tab has to come out. Whether we can get this thing to fit on top of there. Oh no, no. I just want to make sure I ain't grinding something out I don't have to. Yeah, it's gonna take some time to grind it more. Okay. Yeah, I can get them with the electric grinder, but I can't just cut off that right here at the bottom of that L and leave the other piece in. I don't know. If it fits, it'll be fine. Well, I don't want to grind one off and then find out it doesn't because it's going to take a long time to grind that other piece off. Here, here's your angle piece right now. you got a bolt sticking out of here. Yep. What I'm trying to ask you is I can't just grind that off there. John didn't... Because if i got to take the rest of it off, that's what's going to take time. I can get it off. We'll be here half the night doing that. I mean, if you want it out, I'll grind it. Don't matter to me. The only thing I could say is if we want to try it, cut the cut the piece that goes where at the 90. Yeah. See if it fits. If it doesn't, then we got to, then we know. Well, that whole pipe has to go back in there, right? Yes. That's it. I could tell you whether it's going to fit or not. Oh, it looks like it would. All right, so you guys see that right there with the bolt sticking out. We have to grind at the 90 degree angle right here, right here. We are going to grind that off so we can fit the air tubes through there. Um, we have to do that on both sides. I took the bolts. This is the existing air channel that's there. We have to grind this off right here. And when we do that, it's going to give us room to put the, uh, the bracket in. Thanks. <laughs> 
don't know if that will fit. You'll have to check it out. I have your screwdriver. Does it fit? Yep. Okay. You want to do the other side first? Whatever you want to do. Well, we might as well continue to grind and be done with that, right? All right. Now I need my screwdriver. You want this screwdriver left in here? Yeah. I can't get that carrot. There we go. Okay. Good. All right, so the tabs are ground out. There's one there, and the other one's right there. So now what we have to do is put these brackets in. So these brackets are actually machined to fit up in the channel, like so. And then uh, that bolt will get tightened, and it presses up against the roof and the floor of the air channel. And uh, the metal tab with the hole there is where the air tube will sit. So I'm going to work on cleaning some of this creosote out of here so we have a good working space. And my father-in-law, Doug, is running up to grab a uh, couple wrenches. Next thing we need to do is take this plate right here. And the other, the other end. Mm. All right, so just like that. All right, so. Let me, let me talk this through with you. So I got the air channel in on that side. Yeah. This has to go behind it. So it'll sit like this. Okay. And there's a bolt that goes through that side and connects right here with a washer welded on the butt. I'm wondering how I'm going to get that channel. This with those two ears out already. That bolt's in down here, right? Yeah, the bolts that are already there. That's okay. I mean, this one? There should be three. It should be yeah, this. Three. Okay. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. The rest are air holes. All right. And then these, so are, these are where those ears tie in at. All right. But they need to be on the front. That ear needs to be... Here, flat up against side. here. So it needs to be moved back farther. But you can't. Hmm? But you can't because they're see see where the ears at right now. Yeah, you got another quarter inch here. You can move it that way. All right, if you think it'll fit. Look look at the top of the pipe. You see the top of the pipe? You see that little notch? Yeah. No, you can move it. You can move it towards the back of the furnace a little bit more. Problem's going to be getting it over the bolts. Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Because this should be the last thing that goes in. Now, hopefully this works. I don't know which way your, your holes are supposed to be. I guess to the inside. Huh? I got it in, but I don't have it in the channel in the back. The tab on this end is screwing me for that side. Right, because the slot needs cleaned out. Right where that's going. I can grind some more of that off. If you need me to. Well, I really don't want to grind that close to the water jacket, though. Here, then try this. Try, try smacking it down with that. I'm using that as a punch. Is it working? Yeah, it is. He 
told me don't worry about those L brackets, they're useless. Or do you want an open end? <laughs> that, that, that's perfect. All right. All right, that one's done. One side down. Let's see that wrench up there. One side down. Shoot at me. Hard to swing on that side for me. See if you can get them. They seem to have loosened in the back. Both of them? The, uh, okay. you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if that's the right size. All right, guys, so it's fully installed. Um, I know we couldn't do or shoot a lot of this stuff for you guys to see, so I'll go over it real quick. First thing you want to do is take off the existing material that you have. Uh, once you do that, you'll want to take off this piece first and then take off the side channels. Um, also, when you replace it, this piece goes on first. This is the new uh, front air channel. The next thing that you'll want to do is slide off that piece or slide in that piece right there that bolts up to the, to the front air channel and then put these tubes in. The brackets actually fit better when, um, when you put the tube down here and then slide it on to the end over there. Uh, we had this, my father-in-law Doug actually ended up uh, cutting off those tabs right there. You can see the two uh, front tabs, we actually had to pound them down a little bit so the air tube would fit better. Uh, the back ones weren't as bad. They're kind of just, the air tube's kind of just resting on them right now. So um, once that goes in, you can tighten up that back uh, piece of metal right there that kind of separates everything. Or separates into two pieces and, and squeezes so that uh, so it holds the the air tubes there uh, button up put bolts back in and uh, I put never seize on um, all this stuff before I refire the furnace so we're done here uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and fire up so the one thing that I want to do is give a shout out to uh, John Fryman uh, John is the owner of uh, mid Ohio Valley outdoor furnaces John reached out to me through the Facebook group, the Central Boiler Facebook group, and uh, after some discussion, decided to get that uh, upgrade to the 560 ordered and put in on this furnace. So, yeah, if you guys uh, are around my area, uh, you know, West Virginia, uh, well, it would be northwestern West Virginia uh, or eastern Ohio, look John Fryman up from uh, mid-Ohio Valley uh, Outdoor Furnaces. He took care of me, and I'm sure he'll take care of you too, guys. On that note... I'm done.